Hey everyone, this is Amanda from DevotionInAction.com and I'm here in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 with this printable, uh, the little gnome with the tingle up Christmas lights. I'm just going to place that underneath my page and line it up with the pencil tracing that I've already done and washi tape that printable to the Bible page so that it will not shift around on me while I am tracing out. Um, this in the black pen. Remember that I use uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen with India ink to trace this out. It does not react to water. Just going to mark that verse with some brackets. Um, and that's why I can trace this out before I watercolor. If you don't have a pen that doesn't react to water, you should do it in pencil, watercolor, let that dry, and then line out in black pen. So here we go. Matthew 19, verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. When the angel appears to tell Mary, it appears to Mary to tell her what will happen to her, he also informs Mary that her cousin Elizabeth, who is old and barren, is pregnant. The angel uses this as proof that God can do the impossible to help Mary believe the incredible news that she, who has never been intimate with a man, will have a son. And that son will be the son of God. So in Luke 1, verses 35 through 38, it says, And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I chose a gnome all tangled up in Christmas lights for this devotional because it's a symbol of one of the most impossible tasks associated with Christmas at our house. When we're putting up decorations, there's invariably a strand or two of lights that have major issues. <laughs> they won't light up because one light or another is out within the strand. And it's nearly impossible to find the one light to replace so that the strand will light up again. This year, when we put up our Christmas tree, we tested a strand and it worked. We test them every time before we put them on the tree. Then we put it on the tree and half of it went out. My husband reached up. You should hear like angels singing right now. My husband reached out and touched one light and all of them came back on. On the first try, he found the one light that needed to be replaced. Impossible, but possible. Um, so, <laughs> so then um, we were able to like keep the the light the lights on in that strand, and it was it was amazing, um, <laughs> and highly unlikely, probably will never happen again. This Christmas, when we gaze at the Christmas lights on our trees and our decorations on people's houses as we drive around at night, let's. Let's remember that God can do the impossible in our lives, just like he did in Elizabeth's and Mary's, and like Jesus said. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So do you have a, a, a need in your life that seems impossible today? It's time to talk to the one, talk to God, who can do the impossible and ask for his help. Okay, so we've got this little gnome, and I've put a, a lighter brown on his beard, and I'm coming in with a darker beard along the edges uh, and underneath the lights in the edge of his cap that uh, adds some dimension and creates those shadows that would naturally occur uh, when something is in front of the beard. Um, so just adding that in to add a bit of dimension, and then I'm going to come along with a uh, some kind of dark forest green along the wire because the wires of our Christmas lights that go on our tree are, are green. And I've left around in the beard just a little bit of white in places so that, that green will really show. And I'm not using a lot of water here so it doesn't spread around. A lot more pigment than water to be able to focus that on kind of right along that line. 
and the, the, the kind of sockets that the light bulbs screw into, those will also be this color green, if you can't see it on camera. That's a pretty small image. Um, and then I'm gonna take some different bright colors, like red and yellow, blue and green, and do the light bulbs. It's nice if you can leave some white little tiny white spaces as reflections of the light since the bulbs would be glass and reflect the light. So um, so just leave tiny little specks of white in it, these bright colors and it will show like light reflection in them. Uh, adding some, some yellow, bright yellow into those lights. I'm going to take some bright blue. Notice I'm not mixing these up with the greens and the grays that I normally do to temper them or to mellow them. I'm leaving them the really bright colors that naturally occur in the watercolor pans. And again, leaving those tiny little white spaces as reflections of light. And then a very bright green, almost a lime green um, for that middle light there. And then I um, want to mix up some more skin color here for his nose and um, a little bit darker. Um, you, I do like a golden color, add a little bit of red into that, um, and then how, however much compared to water is how dark it will be. Um, and then I'm going to use that, that lovely peacock teal that we played around with the background in yesterday. I'm going to use that for my polka dots and my clothing. Um, it's kind of opposite in color from the golden of the hat and I like how those pop against the gold. So I use that peacock blue to kind of pop against that, adding just a, just a little tiny hints of those around the bottom of his beard at like he's wearing that as his, I don't know, kind of looks like a night, night hat that he's got on there or a nightcap. So, so maybe on his uh, night dress that he's wearing. Uh, as he's trying to untangle these Christmas lights and get them all working properly for his Christmas tree. <laughs> Going to take a little bit darker of that golden color to add some dimension to this uh, cap as well. It's kind of slouchy and um, moves in different ways. It would catch the light and cast shadows in other ways. So um, also those polka dots kept trying to run on me because I used quite a bit of water in that when I Put them down and so just fixing the edges just a little bit they don't have to be perfect but it was running more than i wanted it to and then i was trying a different brown than i normally use and it i don't know it's a weird color but you know well i like to try new things add a little bit of black to it because it wasn't coming out the color that i thought it was going to um I, I tend to get stuck a little bit in a rut and use the same colors over and over again. So I've been trying to break out of that with these daily ones and try some new colors. I'm gonna pull in some purple for my background this time. And I'm not looking for it to be super dark. I'm gonna leave the verse that I bracketed off empty because I'm thinking I want to hit that with metallic. Metallic. and. And, and the gold when I when I bring in some metallics at the end of this at the end of this painting So just making this background mainly purple um, Around this gnome again. That's going to be kind of an opposite color from that gold of the main part of his shoes and his hat and so um, I think it'll really stand out and it doesn't blend in with the green of the wire for the Christmas lights and just trying to keep that in mind as I choose a background color that um, I don't want the, the, any part of the gnome art to disappear into the background. So just choosing an opposite color from that. Um, and then I chose the, the purple was a little too bright when I, I grabbed it. I forgot to mix it in with the gray. And so I just took the gray straight onto the page and mixed it right on the page. Uh, watercolor is so forgiving. It, it really is pretty easy to fix when you make mistakes like that. Um, so that's, that's a really nice thing about watercolor. And then that page has a ton of water. So we're going to hit it with a heat tool and dry it off. Um, since I'm almost done with this, um, I'm going to give you your action step and pray with you. So remember our action step is 
to take those needs in our lives that seem impossible to God, the one who can do the impossible and ask for his help. And I had kind of an idea that I think is, I'm kind of really liking this idea. Write down, take a little piece of paper and write down your prayer with the date and tuck it near a Christmas light in your Christmas tree. Like tuck it in, in the branches. It can be behind something so it doesn't show. That's fine. Um, to remind you that God can accomplish what is impossible for us. And then when he answers, you can write the answer on the paper. It could even be a new tradition to tuck prayers and answered prayers into our Christmas trees each year. And then when we go to decorate our Christmas tree, we will be reminded of the impossible things that God has done in our lives each year. Dear God, I ask you to expand our vision to see where you are doing the impossible in our lives. Help us to believe not in the magic of Santa, but in the ability of our creator God to do what we cannot. Give us faith this Christmas to see what you are doing in our lives that is impossible for us to accomplish. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I have given some, some golden splatters and uh, kind of highlighted that verse in gold. I'm adding the at Devo in action, my handle on Instagram and Facebook, and hashtag DIA Gnomes. That's the hashtag for this series and the date. And then uh, above this gnome, it's going to say nothing is impossible um, because with God, nothing is impossible. Um, and then just giving... Um, extra weight to the downstrokes of that cursive writing. It just improves the way my handwriting looks. <laughs> and this is basically this entry. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.